Hi, I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design, and today I'm going to review the atomic stove, and at the same time I'm going to perform a, an experiment. Uh, I think you can see that this is boiling water, boiling real hard. Now, beginning in my experiment, I'm going to take three plastic spoons. I have a, this is a Kogan's, I think that came from Campmore, Lexane spoon. Uh, this is a Light My Fire spoon, and this is the famous MRE Brown spoon. So I'm going to put all three of those in the boiling water, and we'll do the review on the atomic stove, and then we'll get back to these and I'll explain to you what I'm up to. Comical story. Okay, this is the atomic stove. Uh, originally, I designed this. After I designed the uh, Trek 1 and Trek 2. Now, the Trek 1 and Trek 2 uh, are side jetted stoves. Uh, originally, they didn't, the Trek 1 didn't even have a wick on it. And then I went to the Trek 2, which did have a wick. I changed the jetting some, ended up painting them black. Went about every way it could go with the Trek 2. But the problem with it was, it was side jetted. And because it's a fairly big stove, that meant the flame ring was was big, and it didn't work well on anything for a pot, you know, less than like four and a half, five inches. So, uh, basically, it was just uh, about for about the same use as the BIOS. So um, the BIOS hadn't been invented yet, but that's neither here nor there. So I decided to see if I could make basically the same stove using the same materials and make a smaller flame ring. Well, the only way to do that was to put the jets right in the very top. Uh, kind of a photon type deal. And uh, I put a thumb screw in it also. And this has been <laughs> a very, very successful stove. I uh, Later, when I went to the hot roll crimp, they're all hot roll crimp now. And you can see the jets in the top. Uh, these jets vary. Let's see how many this one's got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This one's got 12 jets. They go anywhere from 10 to 14, depending on how I'm jetting them. And it's a small jet. This still will hold about 3 ounces of fuel and burn for surprisingly close to a half an hour. And the heat range on it is not, it's not anywhere near as hot as the BIOS. It's kind of a mid-range stove. Hotter probably hotter than Bongo, but not as hot as the BIOS. So it works pretty good for a stove with a fairly large pot to simmer, uh, to cook stuff for a long time, because it does, it does uh, run for a really long time. Now, it originally came with an aluminum pot stand, and that was kind of a double-edged sword. It was a neat little pot stand, and it worked pretty well, but it had some problems with the hinges, and, and eventually it was hard to make. It was expensive, so... I finally phased it out and just went with a regular wire pot stand, which was more stable and just seemed to work better, uh, especially since it would fit right over the, uh, the Foster's pot and fit right in a cooking kit, so it really didn't take up any space. But right to this day, I still get requests for that original aluminum pot stand, which I don't make anymore, by the way. So uh, basically, uh, this stove holds three ounces, weighs 17 grams. Uh, it's not an expensive stove. I think it sells in the store for ten dollars, if I'm correct. And uh, it's it's a it's a nice stove. Uh, real success stories. Sell them every day. Very very popular. Okay, now let's get back to the spoon story, which is I find comical. Uh, somebody I did a blow when I was doing the uh, reviews of the MREs. I mentioned to people that although the brown spoon uh, was okay for MREs because the heat pack in the MRE doesn't bring the food up to a rolling boil. So the spoon is fine. You'll never have any problem with it at all. But if you see the spoon and think, wow, that'd be really a lightweight, cheap way to take a spoon for ultralight backpacking. Uh, yeah, it is. But the problem is with ultralight backpacking is you're going to be using an alcohol stove and there's no way to throttle it back, so you're probably going to be boiling a good part of the time. And most people stir their food to keep it from sticking on if they've got a hard boil going. Uh, and this spoon doesn't do well, uh, as you can see, if you boil it. Uh, it's just 
not made to be boiled. It's good for an MRE and it's good for a heat pack, but don't try to use it to stir in an alcohol stove because uh, it'll melt on you and you won't have anything to eat with. So I'm telling you that right up front. It's a good spoon, just not intended to be used in a rolling boil. So people started uh, leaving comments calling me incorrect. They actually called me an idiot, but I'm pretty used to that. And they said any stove, any uh, plastic spoon that you use, if you leave it in boiling water any length of time, it'll melt. They're all that way. Okay, now let's see. We've got, here's a, a light my fire. You can see it's been in there. Undisturbed. And here's a Kogan uh, Lexane spoon. Uh, you can see, been in boiling water for quite a while. I suspect these are both made out of Lexane. Uh, no problem at all. So the people that said plastic spoons will melt if left any plastic spoon. See, that's the thing. That's a general statement. Any any plastic spoon, uh, you can't say that. That's only dumb people say any or all. That's no. See, they're fine. So this brings to my to my final point. I finally figured out these comments that people leave. Uh, obviously, a lot of people don't like me, so they see a video, they immediately look for something to uh, make fun of me or run down or call me wrong on. And they're in, they're so inflamed by this that they make false statements and assumptions, which later they're going to regret. Uh, it's a good idea when you're dealing on the internet where millions of people are going to see your comments to think before you speak. So uh, what happens is they make a statement about this being a perfectly good spoon and that all plastic spoons will melt and then they get thinking about it when you say no they don't. They get thinking about it and realize that was a false statement. Okay, okay, half time. Okay, here's, here's, where the, here's the deal. When you make a stupid statement it's like digging a hole. When you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you do is stop digging. When you make a stupid false statement in front of the public on a public forum, the first thing you do is admit you made a mistake and back up. Don't make a second statement like, well, I'm a better cook than you are, and I, so I know that you never ever keep a spoon in any boiling water for more than a few seconds. And only poor cooks stir stuff with a spoon for any length of time. And see, that's the second stupid statement. Um, obviously wrong. I've watched Emerald Green simmer stuff and talk and stir it for a long time. So that's too stupid. And I won't even go to the third and the fourth one. When you make a mistake, just admit it. Just admit it. It, you'll feel so much better about it rather than making a second stupid statement to back up your first stupid statement, which is going to require a third stupid statement. And when you get all done, you're going to have a whole long blog of stupid statements, which anybody's going to read and go, wow, this guy's got a real ego problem. <laughs> and that's what happens on the forums. And that's why I clip them and delete them immediately and usually don't reply to them. I did do this one because I wanted to use it in the blog. And you can see, not all plastic spoons melt. MRE spoon, not good for boiling. Alcohol stove, don't have a throttle. Have to keep stirring stuff. Therefore, this is not good with this. In a regular MRE environment, good spoon. Alcohol stove, ultralight backpacking, not so much. I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and hike. Take your atomic stove and cook some really great meals. Take a friend. And more important than anything, have a really great day. Bye-bye.